Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Chris from Code The Things, and today I want to take a look at upgrading my PC audio setup. As you can see behind me, this is the desktop that I game on and I work on pretty much all day long, and there's no external speakers to be found. So what I do is I utilize my SteelSeries headset, which is the Wireless Pro, it comes with rechargeable batteries, so it's technically possible to use all day long, but it is a headset, so it wears on your ears, it leaves that funky little groove in your head that you really don't like going out in public with, hence why I wear these hats. And well, I wanted an opportunity to relieve the stress of wearing a headset in between meetings. So I was thinking, you know what, let's pick up the brand new Razer Leviathan V2 and give it a whirl. So taking the device out of the box, the first thing I notice is it has rather large physical buttons to control it, which I like. That removes the guessing that a lot of the touch capacitive devices come with these days and I can just reach over and I can either power it on, power it off, turn up the volume. Definitely A plus on that Razer. Taking a look at the rear, we see two rather large woofers comparative to the size of the speaker. So I'm hoping it can displace enough air to really pump some music without struggling or distortion. And lastly, I wanna call out on the bottom, there are two stands that are about a 20% grade of lift to make sure that it hits your ears. They are not removable. And there's also the chroma light bar. So this does sync with Synapse and you can do the chroma lighting if you choose to. I may or may not, but we'll check it out. So I haven't quite thought about where I want to put this yet. I kind of just ordered it hoping for the best. Um, I'm particular about where my keyboard sits and where my mouse sits. Having to utilize a wireless charging mouse pad, it does take up a significant amount of room. And when I'm gaming first person, I'm really fidgety on how everything's arranged. So I'm going to have to make sure that the soundbar fits appropriately and doesn't impact any of my gaming. The other thing I didn't quite account for is I had this large Stream Deck XL because, well, I don't often use it. I lost my profile and since they don't cloud sync, I've been a little lazy at reconfiguring this and it just mostly sits here and doesn't do a whole lot. Now, one of the things is this is actually made to be able to fit in between your monitor stand pretty decently. So I can see that you know, it would just fit where I would want my mouse and my keyboard. And because of the legs, it can actually lift over the cables and do a little bit of a nice cable management that may or may not be easy to see there, but it's actually running underneath my speaker now. So if I put my keyboard back where I had it, I put the speaker dead center, mostly dead center there. I guess now the only challenge is trying to figure out how to run the cable for it and where the stream can, the uh, stream deck can actually go. Unfortunately, I wasn't thinking that this is USB-C and my motherboard only comes with one USB-C port on the rear of it. And well, that's being utilized by my Xbox controller. So I may be able to get away with using the front port for the controller. I really don't like that. I don't like the idea of having to add an add-on card for USB-C, but that might be the route to go because I don't want to use a USB-C to USB-A adapter and hope for the best. Okay, so right away, it didn't take Chroma. Let's launch Synapse and see. I'm going to be a little bit curious. I'm not a big fan of the Razer THX. I never thought it sounded good, and every single time it has an update, regardless of if you have a Razer headset, it takes over all of your audio devices. So I have been like brutally annihilating it off of my operating system every time it appeared. So we can see Razer's taking an update. So clearly this is installing the de device drivers and getting the speaker ready for use. So while it's doing that, uh, we have for the buttons, we have a plus and a minus, we have a Bluetooth. It looks like an audio input. So maybe between PC and Bluetooth, I'm unsure, uh, as well as the power button. So. Oh, okay, so it turns on like a little alien spaceship. I didn't realize it was not on. No push to hold. It's fairly quick button push, which I'm a big fan of. Uh, the biggest headache with my Steel Series is the fact that the headset, if it ever turns off on its own, it takes forever for the button to register and turn back on. So glad to see that. Hopefully this Razer update finishes here anytime soon, but let's take a look at audio devices. Unfortunately, there's no microphone on this, so one of the things I was hoping for was doing conference calls instead of having the big bulky gaming headset on. I could use this for conference calls themselves. Uh, I might have a workaround using the Razer Keo. It does have a mic, it's not the best, but at least then I get the mic 
camera combo and then I'll have the speakers. So I'll have to test and see how much audio that microphone picks up. All right, so I set this as my default audio device and I was gonna check out some epidemic sound and then suddenly all of my USB devices disabled and took about 30 seconds to come back on. So I'm hoping it was just some sort of static shock from touching something somewhere. Not really sure how that would have happened, but uh, let's make sure that this stays on. So let's check out some music that is safe to play on YouTube and go from here. So the volume is actually going in sixes, which is a weird metric. I, I thought it would have just been one unless you push and held, but uh, volume's going in sixes. The bass seems a little bit weak, but the surround to it sounds pretty decent. I know this comes with an optional Bluetooth uh, subwoofer, so that's probably where the bass is lacking. Um, I'm gonna see what this buck does. I have no idea what the hell that just did. Oh! That is awesome. It switched back to my last used device for default device. So it goes back to my headset when I click this. Stays on, goes back to my headset. I don't have to worry about coming into sound settings every time. That's a neat trick. Uh, I don't think I often see that with any of the devices. So I like that. I'm pleased with the, uh, the kind of bounce back on the audio channels there. Um, it definitely is lacking from bass, but let's check out a video and see if it's any different. No! We need to get it back where they came from. No way to get it back. They just destroyed the quantum tunnel. Hold on! That wasn't our only time machine. So I tried like Avatar, I tried Avengers. I, I didn't mean to just stay at the A's, but I knew that there were some action scenes, some dialogue. It sounds a little quiet when I'm watching uh, movies here and um, it, it definitely sounds a lot more hollow so maybe the subwoofer would round it out a bit but I feel like you're missing some of the mids that the speaker should produce so it sounded a lot better from the music on Epidemic so let's check out a couple YouTube videos and see if it's any different. It's been asleep for 5,000 years. If you find us a cell that can hold them, hmm. we'll take care of the rest. Who's on the team? I didn't bring a passport. So it still sounds a little hollow. I don't know. It sounds like it's all just coming from the center, you know, even though it's a stereo setup. So it sounds like they're trying to virtualize the center a bit. Uh, maybe it doesn't have good signal on what channel should be producing what. Um, it's definitely not super impressive from that standpoint, but it is possible that it's better um, maybe better suited for music or maybe there's some fine tuning that can be done. I didn't really adjust any of the enhancements over here. Never really had to in the past with any device, but I also feel it's fairly quiet again. So from the video perspective, um, it's not the same quality as what that music was from Epidemic Sound. So same thing, checking out videos from the Plex app versus the web. It's not a lot of depth and it's kind of quiet. So, well, let's check out the Synapse settings and see if there's anything we can adjust. Hey, all right, we have a speaker in here. Press and hold the source button on the soundbar to switch between the soundbar and another playback device below. So I'm going to hard code that. Okay, so I was supposed to be pressing and holding that. All I was doing was tapping that and it was switching between the devices, but maybe that's because I don't have Bluetooth set up. So it's just supposed to switch between sources of Bluetooth. So it's not exactly what it was saying. Um, it does look like it came prefabbed uh, with audio uh, set on music. So let's check out movie and give this another go. This is war going on outside. We're Man. here to negotiate your peaceful surrender. That's a lot louder and sounds a lot better now that it's on movie rather than music for YouTube. So definitely, definitely you have to play with the uh, equalizer on the speaker. Sometimes I found just kind of a norm was good enough, 
but there's definitely a difference. So I'd rather have this input button be a press and hold to switch between devices and the input actually change between the different equalizers because I'm never gonna use the Bluetooth. Uh, maybe there's gonna be some customizations down the line, but just some food for thought on how Razer could enhance this, or I guess I'm gonna be taking more use of my Stream Deck to make sure that I can do that. All right, so I'm gonna quick set up a couple things and then let's see how it handles while gaming. Ah. Okay, so I attempted to do this with just Synapse on the game setting. It still sounded kind of quiet. It wasn't super awesome for a directional, but once I added the Dolby Digital to do the audio, it actually got way worse. It was just muddied. It was louder, but it was a lot harder to tell where things were. I think just even from looking at Rocket League, where all I really need to know is if you're on the sides or behind me, I don't even know, need to know how close you are. It wasn't very usable from that extent. For using this for movies and for music in between meetings, sure. For using it for games, I'm still definitely gonna to stick to my headset. Well, jump to the future and here we are. So I've been testing the Razer Leviathan V2X for about two weeks now. Uh, it was pretty simple to set up and to use most of the time day to day. Uh, the only real complexity was clearly me saying the name correctly throughout the video, so sorry about that really don't know what the heck was going through my head. As for my experience, uh, it's been mostly on par with what I had hoped from a speaker. Uh, the audio input selection sometimes decides it's going to be the Bluetooth button instead. Uh, I've only really noticed that since the latest Leviathan update and I'm hoping that Razer identifies that and fixes it. Uh, it's a pain at times when I have to bring up the audio console to actually switch to the speaker instead of my headset because the button there's no cancel, it just kind of keeps searching until it times out after a minute or so. So I have to wait until that times out or manually change in my OS settings what the output device is. Another weird quirk, the speaker seems to actually turn on randomly at times. I'm not really sure why. Uh, it doesn't happen too often, but uh, for example, during a Rocket League match, it does lock up the game for a second or two while it's launching and deciding if it wants to be the primary device. Um, that seems to be just a quirk with Razer. It's been there since before the firmware update. Happens probably once or twice a day and mostly while gaming. So I don't know what Synapse is trying to do or identify on why it thinks that device needs to be on. Now as for overall sound quality, it's okay for music. It's probably about a seven. I mean, it doesn't have the subwoofer. If it had the subwoofer, let's bump it to a seven and a half. I'm assuming being a Razer subwoofer, it's not going to be extremely boombastic and all of that, but it should help with the sound. It is a little bit hollow, but not really bad when you have it on the music equalizer. The problem starts to come out when you start shifting to movies or TV. You get in that, it's probably around like a five for quality on watching those. And then when we shift to gaming, as you saw in the video and some of my feedback, it's really more like a one or two. Uh, stereo speaker is never going to be great for surround sound, no matter what type of virtual surround you add to it. And uh, the lack of, I guess, overall output of this isn't really going to help with any sort of bouncing off the walls for a full surround effect. So definitely not going to be using it anytime soon for gaming. I'll still use it for my movies. I'll still use it for my video conferencing. It gives me a chance to relax the ears, as I've said, and that's really what the goal was here. A minimalistic way of adding some speakers. It doesn't look too intrusive on the desktop and serves its purpose. Well, if you happen to be in the market for yourself or someone you know for the holidays or birthdays, uh, the Razer Leviathan V2X, it's a decent device for $99. It's palatable uh, with the subwoofer, you know, take it as you will. You can probably find some better setups for the same price once you add the subwoofer on, but I'm pleased with what I went with here and I think most of you would be as well. I'm Chris from Code the Things. Appreciate you watching. Click like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.